Ultraman Nexus was the next uh, Ultraman series I watched, and for the first 25 episodes, I had an idea of where the show was going, but I was wrong. And I kept saying Komon was going to become the next Ultraman. Well, that didn't happen right then and there. After that story arc was finished with June and Mizurogi, um, June dies and the power gets passed on. But instead of it going to Komon like I was predicting it would, it went to another person uh, named Ren. And the problem here was, at that point, the final you know, 12 episodes of the show had a completely different story arc. And there were all these new questions that came out. They tried to answer some things, but it was like, what? And then they connected the show to uh, Ultraman the Next. And I was kind of just like, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I did like Ren. I liked the story arc that they did after that. But um, it wasn't until the very last episode when um, Ren... Uh, basically, he had, in the episode 36, Ren, uh, almost dies, the power moves past him, and goes on to another person, but, uh, it went to the vice captain, and then after it went to the vice captain, then it finally got to Komon, and that was in the final episode where the traitor was revealed, to be one of the members of the Night Ra uh, Raiders, and yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed the show, but I would only put it above Dinah. So here is the order for the series that I've watched: uh, Gaia, Tiga, Nexus, and then Dinah. Um. At some point, I'll re-review, like, the older shows and then actually do, like, an Ultraman, like, list of what I like the best. But Nexus had a lot of potential, but certain choices they made kind of made it hit or miss for me. Uh, I enjoyed it to a point, but it was only to a point. Um, and one of the things that started off pretty good was that it took a while to defeat each monster. Like, they kept reappearing. It was like five episodes before the first monster was actually defeated for good. And it was like building up the story. And I liked how that was going um, for a while. But later on, sometimes it just was... You know, they would actually defeat it, but then the bad guy, Mizorogi, brought it back. Um... And all the different monsters were all combined together to the penultimate villain. And then the final villain was an evil Ultraman. Basically, they took the Dark Mephisto, made him even darker, and that was the final villain of the show. And I'm kind of just like, why couldn't they have just given him a different like way to look? Jump cut! I'm back. Um, so, the show overall, I thought, was fun. But... It wasn't the best. It was 37 episodes, and during the final episode, the subtitles broke. Um, so Tubi just didn't have them for it for some reason, which sucked. But I understood enough of what was going on, and I know a little bit of Japanese, so I was able to finish it. Jump cut again. Had to give my youngest the tablet, because he's kind of grouchy when he wakes up at the same time as me. Uh... Music was okay. Um, not that many really standout tracks for it. And uh, the Ultraman designs were okay. Um, even when Komon did finally get the power and he was able to basically copy what everybody else was doing, his ultimate form... Okay. So... Yeah, out of the four that I have watched since I started this channel, this is number three in terms of uh, enjoyment. Uh, I liked um, Gaia and Tiga the best, and I will be watching another Ultraman series uh, soon. I am watching another Ultraman movie right now, 
And then when that's done, I will watch uh, even more Ultraman. So have a good one.